Mm -hmm. If you have your Bibles, if you could take them out, turn to me to uh, Ephesians chapter number 2, starting at verse number 18. Ephesians chapter number 2, starting at verse number 18. If you have your cell phones, your mobile devices, whatever you have with you in the house this morning, or maybe you are watching with us online, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to grab that Bible and turn with me to Ephesians chapter number 3. I start from chapter number 2, verse 18. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 18. And when you have it, please stand over the building. And man, if you are watching us online, you probably are not standing. You probably sit down or in your bed. But wherever you are, I want you to just put some prayer hands in the chat so I know that you're with me. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2, starting at verse number 18. The Bible says, For through him we both have access to one spirit unto the Father. Now I want you to do me a favor. I want you to jump over to Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis chapter number 3. I'm sorry, Revelation. Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 8. It says, I know thy works Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Somebody say an open door. Come on, somebody say an open door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and has den not denied my name. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Family, in our time together this morning, I want to talk to you using as a subject, access granted. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you, God, for this extraordinary worship experience. And I pray, God, that you do something supernatural in the building today, God. You know, that your people have come to hear from you. And I pray, God, that as every Sunday, you always meet us at our point of need. So, Father, I pray that as I decrease, you increase in me. Use this word to begin to empower and stress in your people. And as I minister your word, let your people be edified. Let you be glorified and most importantly, let the enemy be horrified. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Access granted. Amen. I'm going to ask that the sound lady do me a favor and turn me down just a little bit in the back. I do feel some echo and feedback. Turn me up a little more than that. Just a little more. That's perfect right here. Um, the title of this message this morning and the teaching is Access Granted. Access Granted. And I want to make sure that everyone that's in the building today understands what this term means. Um family, without question, the past seven months, and I'm sure those of you that are in the building as well as those of you that are here uh, that are watching with us online, I can assure you that in the past seven months, our world has been completely unraveled in a way that no one could have ever predicted. No one could have ever seen this coming um, in a way that it has impacted us today. And the reality is we were all blindsided by a virus that uh, epidemiologists and biologists call a 100 or once in a lifetime event. I would say they would say this doesn't happen often. The last time something of this nature has happened, we haven't seen it anywhere uh, in humanity since the time of the Spanish flu. During that time, that was the closest that we've ever gotten to see anything of this magnitude in terms of a virus impacting and hitting the world the way that it has done today. We're also experiencing, as a result of that virus impact, we're also experiencing an economic hardship that no one has seen since the time of the Great Depression. No one has seen the amount of uh, layoff, the amount of financial institutions closing, the amount of businesses shutting down, the, uh, the amount of financial need that has gone out across the world. In fact, um, regrettably, I watched a video a couple of weeks ago where they're now evicting people from their homes. So no one has seen anything like this in quite some time. I mean, it's been so bad that even marriages have now become to get to the place where they're now um, being unraveled in a way where husbands and wives are now pitting against each other. People are starting to, to, to get uh, a little bit uh, confused about the state of their relationships. And, and husbands are, are being found to abuse their wives and wives are being found to abuse their husbands and children are being caught in the middle of all that is happening. And 
And just like that, it did not end. We also reminding that in the past four to five months ago, we start to see that um, there has been this problem brewing in the American culture, there has been this problem brewing here, and it's now it come to the surface and it's called racial and social injustice. All this is happening in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. All this is happening while people are quarantined in their homes. And I wanna to say to you, family, all these things are things that the enemy is using to try to stoke fear in the hearts and minds of people. These are things that Satan is using to try to cause people to be depressed. These are things that the enemy is doing that's trying to cause people to lose hopelessness. He's trying to, to make people resort to violence and civil unrest. He's trying to cause people to be consumed by division and also consumed by fear. If he had it his way, he would be very close to preparing the world for the entry of the Antichrist. But I want to say something to you, family, whether you want to believe it or not, I want to call your attention to a reality. And the reality is this, and don't miss this. The reality is that in spite of everything that has been happening around the world, the reality is, family, you still made it. Despite everything that has been happening, if you are in the building this morning, I want you to know you're still made. If you're watching us online, I want you to know that you still made it. You not only survived this most trepidous time in world history, you also kept the faith in the middle of everything that has been happening and you did not relinquish to the ideology of quitting at this point in your life. You decide that I'm not going to give up in the middle of death and destruction and famine and all that's happening. I'm not going to quit on God. Why? Because God has never quitted on me. Are you with me this morning? You survived. Because you survived, I want to let you know this morning, family, because you stood in the midst of the pandemic, because you kept the faith over while people were, were just forgetting who they were in the world, because you decide to trust God even when you could not trace him, I want to say to you, family, all because you survived everything that you've been through during this season, family, I want you to know that God says access has been granted to you now for you to step into everything that he has in store for your life. Somebody say access granted. In other words, because you made it through the last season of your life, access has now been granted to you to step into every promise that God has laid up and stored up for your life. In fact, some of you are about to enter the best and the greatest season of your life. Some of you are about to walk into what I coin sweatless victories. Is there anybody here this morning or anyone watching online that can stand to receive some sweatless victories where you don't have to raise a hand, you don't have to yell, you don't have to stomp your feet, you don't have to do anything but walk into everything God has for you. Why? Because during this season, access has been granted to you for you to experience sweatless victories in your life. Somebody needs to put in the chat sweatless victories. Make no mistake about it, family. So, so much of your ability to receive and retain the success that God has stored up for you this year, so much of that is contingent on you not forgetting who you are as you continue to navigate through these uncertain times. Did you hear what I just said? So much of you being able to gain access has everything to do with you not forgetting who you are during these most difficult seasons of your life. Now discover that unless you have confidence in who you are as a child of God, 
you will never be able to access all the greatness that God has placed inside of you. Did you hear what I just said? Unless you have confidence in who you are, you will never be able to gain access to all the greatness that God has placed inside of you. And the enemy has invested and he is investing a lot in this year towards making sure that the people of God lose sight of not only who they are, but also lose sight of the promises that he made over their lives. He is, he is putting in time, he's putting in work to make sure that he keeps you feeling depressed. He's putting in work to, to make sure that he tries to keep us feeling like we're not going to come out. He's putting in a lot of effort to make sure that we retain the addictions and the things that we're struggling with in our flesh. He's putting in the time to make sure that you never catch a glimpse of who you really are in the kingdom. He wants to make sure that you, you continue to think that this is a season that's going to last forever. But family, I want to remind you what the Bible says. The Bible says to everything there is what? A season. So there's a time to live, a time to die. So God is saying that even though we're in the most difficult and trying seasons of our lives, you need to know that access has been granted. And because you have been granted access, you need to know that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. This morning, I want you to know the Holy Spirit wants me to remind you that you have gained access. And because you have gained access, you need to understand what does that mean for you? What does it mean for me to have access? I'm going to let you know what it means for you to have access, family. When God says you have gained access, he says that you have now gained access to experiencing joy. He said that you have gained access to experiencing happiness. You have gained access to experiencing healing in your body. You have gained access to experiencing God's uncommon favor. You have gained access to experiencing what I call more than enough. You have gained access to get that promotion on your job. You have gained access to walk into everything that God has for you. Why? Because God says access has now been granted to you and so it's critical that you recognize that in this season you can't go away your access in this season you can't allow the enemy to make you forget that God has already gave you the passport that God has already gave you the keys that God has already given you the ability to step into his promises you cannot afford to let the enemy keep you at a place where you forget who you are during this season. Why? Because the moment he makes you forget who you are, then he will revoke your access. Did you hear what I just said? The moment you allow the enemy to make you forget who you are, then you now, in effect, has caused him to make you revoke your access. But I need to know, where are the people of God in here this morning and watching online that said, I want my access to remain constant and always. I don't need my access to be reversed. I don't need my access to be null and void. I want to be able to step into everything to speak everything, to claim everything God has for me. Why? Because I'm decreeing and declaring that this is a season in my life that no matter what things look like, I know that God has given me access. But here it is. Only through discovering and accepting who you are will you be able to put your life into perspective and recognize that everything that you have experienced in your life, every challenge that you have experienced in your life, the good and the bad challenges were simply a setup for God to do something better in your life. The Bible teaches us that God, what? He chastens those whom he loves. So, so the challenges and the obstacles that we are experiencing in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis we're only there because God wanted to ensure that you have the keys to get the access. Did you hear what I just said? So the challenges and the obstacles that you face on your job, the challenges and the obstacles that you're facing financially right now, the issues that you're confronted with in your marriage right now, God is saying those are all things that he has put in place. Why? Because they are the way he's going to ensure that you retain the access to everything he has for you. 
I saw the Bible says in Romans, this is my favorite scripture. He says that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. This is a principle that God wants to unveil to his believers. He's saying that all things work for your good according to his purpose. So you got to ask yourself a question. Is this challenge in my life right now working for my good because it's according to God's purpose? Or is this something that I introduced into my life by my own decisions and choices? One of the things you have to realize, family, is that our life's journey is going to always be shaped and molded and modeled after our individual experiences. It's going to be impacted by our relationship. It's going to be influenced by culture. It's going to be influenced by social norms and the world that's around us. And I realize that we are constantly, continuously, we are constantly seeking to divide, define ourselves through uh, the things that we experience in our life. And sometimes we often feel the pressure to define ourselves through our jobs. Sometimes we often feel the pressure of defining ourselves through our financial status. Sometimes we often feel the pressure of defining ourselves through our social status. How many, how many friends we have on Facebook? How many friends we have on Instagram? We, we define ourselves through the success that we have in life. How, how, how much I make on my job? Or what title do I hold in my job? We find ourselves even trying to define ourselves through what we look like. Whether we have the best looking outfits on, the best clothes, the best things that we can, uh, money can buy. But, but what happens to your identity, family? What happens to your identity when you experience loss or failure? What happens to who you are when those things don't work out for you? When you lose someone's favor? What happens when you are burned out from the job that you're committing yourself to every day, day in and day out. Does that level of impact has any weight on your identity? Is your identity shaking, shaken and, and, and altered in those moments as you, you seek to define yourselves through these things or are you looking to always define yourself by what God has called you? Are you looking to define yourself by who God says you are? That's why your identity should never exist in external things, but it should always exist in eternal things. Did you hear what I just said? Your identity should not rest in external things. Why? Because external things are only temporal. Your identity should be resting in eternal things. That's why you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he's preparing you for a kingdom that is not of this world. And if your mind is only stuck on what's on the world, then you will not realize that you already lost access. But your mind has to be set on heavenly things. The Bible says set your mind on heavenly things above. You should also have your identity rooted in God, rooted in his precepts and his principles that are found in scripture, which should be aligned to your core values and should be aligned to who you are and what you believe. And I remember in my youth, I was struggling with my identity. I was struggling to define who I was in my youth. I would, I would hang out with people that did not do a lot of good things in my youth. I remember I was just trying to connect with people who I thought this is who I wanted to be. I found myself on the wrong side of things a lot of times because I just felt that this is where I should be. Not realizing that it was all a setup for me to lose who God has called me to be. I remember that I would, I would in my youth, I would be a person that would engage in so many negative activities. 
I don't want to go and tell all my story, but the reality is I believe in being a transparent leader. I remember in my youth, I was a part of gangs in my youth. In my youth, I was on the streets doing some things that I am not proud to say I did. Connecting with people that I had no business being connected with. And it was only through prayer and the grace of God from my mother and my parent, my family, that the enemy didn't take my life. And there were many occasions where the enemy could have took my life. Why? Because I was connecting with the wrong people, but even more importantly, I was trying to find who I was through the people I was with. And that's part of the enemy's plan to keep you from not gaining the access that God has for you. He wants you to believe that the people you are associating with are the people that are going to give you the keys. But I want you to know the people that you are associating with, you have to ask yourself the question, are they in line with God's plan for my life? Because if they're not in line with God's plan for my life, then they're not there to give you the keys. They're there to make sure you revoke your access. Did you hear what I just said? So you need to assess in this season who are the people that you're with because those people are sometimes the very people that cause your access to become revoked. It got so bad that even in my mid-20s, I was still trying to define myself through people and through status. And there is no question about it. At that point in my life, at that time in my life, I was suffering from an identity crisis. I was, I was not sure who God called me to be. I was not clear of how my parents raised me. I was not in moving in a direction that was going to lead me towards success. At that point in my life, I was truly suffering from an identity crisis. And here it is. I would never have been able to receive everything God has for me because I was not in a position to gain the access that God wanted me to have. Why? Because I allowed my access to be revoked by connecting with people and engaging in activity that ensured that God never granted me the access I asked for. So what do I mean by that? Your decisions and choices are going to also be the platform that will determine how much access you get. So if you are not positioning yourself appropriately for God to unlock some things in your life, you will never step into the things he has for you because you are not positioning yourself to gain the access. Did you hear what I just said? And so the truth of the matter is, some of us right now this morning are suffering from an identity crisis. Some of you this morning are suffering from things that are causing you to forget who you are. You know your name. I know your name. I know my name too. You know who your parents are. You know what your background story is. But the truth of the matter is, you still don't understand your purpose. You still don't know why you're here. You have relented to thinking that you're here to take up space. Or even worse, the enemy has caused you to believe that you have time. And if there's one thing that 2020 has revealed to us, it should be that tomorrow is not promised to any man. Amen. And so you don't need to put off tomorrow what you can do today because the reality is that God says you need to get your life together today don't wait until tomorrow because you may not wake up to see tomorrow and God says you have access today you need to step into it and don't receive anything contrary why because you are moving in the direction that he has for you and family I have feared that during the past seven months the enemy has caused many of us to not only lose our identity, but he's caused us to put ourselves in position where our access is now being revoked for some things in our lives. Simply because of our mindset. Simply because of ideology that we embrace. Simply because of things that we connect to. You are putting yourself in a position where things are being revoked in your life. And God says that is not 
his plan he has for you. That is not why he has put you in the position that you're in. He's placed you there to be a blessing. He's placed you there to be a change agent. He's placed you there to be his resource so that he can bless and restore someone else's life. But when you get caught up in where you are and the things that you're doing, you inadvertently cause yourself to lose access to the things that God has for you. But I want to remind you this morning, don't allow the enemy to cause you to revoke your access. Don't allow the enemy to put you in a position where your access becomes null and void. Don't allow the enemy to put you in a position where you don't see yourself operating in the identity of who God has called and preordestined you to be. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that your life is on the right track when you are actually moving in the wrong direction. And truth to be told, many of us still are allowing other people to determine our outcome. We're still allowing other people to control and influence where we go, who we connect with, what we say, what we do. And God is saying, if I've given you access, why are you allowing them to run your life? If I put the keys into your heart, if I put purpose in your life, why are you allowing other people to influence you more than me? Some of us have put more faith and trust in people more than we do than we did in God. Some of you have even allowed this pandemic and this quarantine to reshape your identity and the things that you believe. How many of you know this morning that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind? How many of you know this morning that God says that you cannot afford to suffer from an identity crisis in this season of your life. You have to know who you are and whose you are. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation. The Bible says that you are a royal priesthood. You are a child of the king. It says that you are God's anointed and God is the one who controls and preordains and destined your life. That is who your trust needs to be in. It cannot be in the world. The Bible says that you are more than the conqueror. And so God is saying that anytime you put me before you, there's nothing that you can't do, do in me and through me. Why? Because you have gained access to the kingdom. What we must comprehend today is that the enemy is an expert at strategically amplifying issues in our lives to get us to believe that we can become completely ignorant of his devices, to get us to believe that, that the things that he tells us are where God wants us to be is not where God wants us to be. He gets us to believe and accept things that are not a part of God's purpose and plan for our lives and as a result of it, we become ignorant of the things he's doing. And so we not only lose our identity, and don't miss this, but we forfeit our access to God's promises. The Bible says that he even at one point in time tempted Jesus to try to get Jesus to, to surrender his authority. The devil said to him, and this is what the Bible says, he says that if thou be the son of man, Command these stones to become bread. This is what the devil told Jesus. If you are the son of God, command these stones to be bread. This was done to make Jesus doubt his identity in God and cause him to forfeit his access. It meant that if Jesus decided to accept what the enemy was telling him, then he would have freely given his access as the son of God. And the truth of the matter is the enemy is trying the same tactics on so many of us today. He's presenting us with things that seem so desirable, with things that seem so advantageous, but its, it's actual purpose and its and actual design has been created to cause you to not only forget who you are, but to cause you to forfeit your access as the king's child. It's sort of kind of like 
Anybody ever have any um, those online accounts where you log in, and after a certain number of logins, what happened? It says access denied, right? You get like three attempts, some people get five attempts, but you get a few attempts, and what happens? It says access denied. The enemy is presenting us with so many things, why? Because all he's doing is making us every time we are causing our access to be set back. So every time we accept something and step into things that he doesn't have, for, that God doesn't have for us, what happens? That's our first access to knowledge. That's our first identity being tested and we're failing. And then we get these certain number of attempts. And just like when you log online, what's going to end up happening is you're going to go to get access to something and you're going to find out that you've been locked out of. What I'm saying to you is if you continue to allow the enemy to present things into your life that seem more desirable and more acceptable than God, all you're going to do is cause your access to get locked out. God is saying that you can't live in this world anyway. You can't accept what society is saying. You have to walk as a child of the king. And whenever you don't walk as a child of the king, you are causing yourself to be locked out. So I ask you again, for the sake of raising a question for you to consider. What is your posture during this season? Where can God find you during this season? Because if he can find you in a place that he has not destined for you, I want you to know that you have caused your access to be locked out. Did you hear what I just said? Because God can identify with people who are not walking and who we call them to be. See, if God says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, if God says great is he that's in you than he that's in the world, if God says that he can do all things to you, why are you allowing the enemy to present things to you that contradict what God said? So whenever you embrace things that are contradictory to what God says, you are now causing yourself to be locked out. Is that making any sense to you? You're causing yourself not to gain the access that God has for you. But he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you were prosperous. So God, even in the middle of the pandemic, my bank account don't look the way I want it, but God, you are able. I'm afflicted in my body, but God, you're able. I'm struggling on the job, but God, you're able. I'm doing everything I need to do. Why? Because I know that he who has begun a good work in me is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So I'm not going to worry about what the world is doing and what they're saying I'm going to believe and trust in what God has spoken and decreed over my life so that I can make sure I retain the access that he has given me Amen. because through walking in God's purpose is how you retain the access that he has given you does this make any sense to you this morning yes. too often we make decisions in our lives that run us down a path that causes us to revoke our access. And sometimes these decisions and choices present themselves at logical moments. They present themselves as the quote, right thing to do. But can I suggest to you that sometimes you need to learn how to discern what's for you and what's not for you. You need to learn how to understand when God is moving in a situation and when your flesh is moving in a situation. Did you hear what I just said? Because sometimes to the person that allowed themselves to become desperate, and don't miss this, sometimes a fleshly move can camouflage itself at the sermon. Who are you talking about, Pastor? Sometimes when you want something so much, you can convince yourself that this is what God wants for you. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes when you want something so bad, you can convince yourself that this is what God wants for you. But I want to say something to you. If the thing that you are chasing after does not align up with God's word and what he has spoken of your life, then you don't need to have that thing as a desire in your heart. Because all it will do is become a stumbling block 
that the enemy will use to keep you from getting to where God wants you to go. Why? Because you'll be trying to repair something that God said it was not for you to begin with. You'll be trying to restore something that God said this wasn't meant to help build you. It was designed by the enemy to trap you. But because you are operating in self, it makes you believe that, you know what, this is what I want and it's not what God wants for you. It's in those moments where you are actually losing the access that God is giving you. Why? Because you're relenting to a mindset or embracing a thought that is not what God has for your life. That's why we cannot get caught up in making decisions and choices that leads us down a road that causes us to lose our identity. And as a result, the access that God has been giving us will become revolt. We cannot afford ourselves to do that. We cannot make decisions right now, not during this season. This is a time in your life where your, deceit, your decisions and choices have to be so strategic. They have to be so intentional. They have to be well thought out. But more importantly, don't miss this, they have to be prayed over. Because when you pray and seek God's wisdom and his guidance, that's how he's going to help you make better decisions and choices for your life. The Bible said the devil decided to tempt Jesus one more time. And he said to him, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. Because it is written that the angels will bear you up in their arms. But here it is, yet again, Jesus refused to compromise his identity and forfeit his access because of his circumstances. And this is a great teaching moment for us because we should never allow ourselves to lose it. Don't miss this. Don't ever allow yourself to lose your identity as a child of God when you are confronted with seemingly impossible situations or circumstances in your life. That's very critical for everyone to understand. You cannot allow yourself to lose focus, to forget who you are, to relent to fear, to relent to depression when you are confronted with the most difficult and most challenging times in your life. Why? Because the reality is God specializes in things that seem impossible. And so what's impossible for man will absolutely always be possible for God. But here it is, don't miss this. The enemy would like nothing more than to create a barrage in your life, a mirage in your life, where he wants you to think that this is what's really happening when the truth of the matter is he's causing you to lose your access. So God is saying when things are difficult in your life, when you don't know where to turn, when you don't understand what is happening, when you're not clear on where society or where culture or where politics is going, God says your trust needs to be in him. Let him order your steps. Why? Because the Bible says that the steps of a good man or a good woman are what? They're ordered by God. Those are the times in your life where you need to be reminded that access that God has given you is the access he's given you to step into your purpose and to step into his will for your life. It's critical for us during this season to know who we are in God because it's through our identity in God that he's now able to give us access to the king and to the keys of the kingdom. It's through your identity in God that's how he's able to unlock some things in your life. Through your identity in God, that's how he's able to reveal to you why you are here, what he placed you on this earth for. It's through your identity in God that you're able to realize that great is he that's in me than he that is in the world. When we don't know who we are in Christ, people and situations will start to now begin to tell us who we are not. Did you hear what I just said? When you don't know who you are in Christ, 
Your situations and your circumstances are going to tell you who you are. Your situations and circumstances are going to define to you who they want you to be. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 27, the devil spoke to the people when he tried to mock Jesus on the cross. He said to him, if you be the son of God, come down from there. Even though Jesus refused to come down, even though Jesus had the power and the authority to step down from the cross, he rejected what they were saying and he rejected the voice of the enemy. And the truth is, family, the enemy tries to tempt us the same way today. He tries to get us to believe that we don't have access to the kingdom. But I want you to know, family, this morning that God says you have access to everything he has for you. You have access to all that God has set up for you. You have access to what God's plan and purpose is for your life. So I want you to know God has given you access this morning. He wants you to know that he created you in his image and his likeness. He wants you to know that you are a joint heir in the kingdom. He wants you to know that, that, that this is a time for you to walk in greatness. He wants you to know that from the time that you were in your mother's womb, that he marked you for purpose and for destiny. He wants you to know that he has birthed you into this world not by accident, but by intentionality. He wants you to know that the wealth and the riches belong in your house. He wants you to know that the kingdom is yours. And as a kingdom citizen, you have access to everything that he has spoken and decreed over your life. You have access to step into things that have been denied to you. You have access to walk into your best days and your great days. You have access to tear down every stronghold and every curse that the enemy has tried to play your life with. You have access to live in the happiness that you deserve for your life. You have access to walk into the total healing that God has spoken over your life and that Jesus has paid with for his blood. You have access to the happiness that you rightfully deserve during this season in your life and you have access to everything that God says. Why? Because the truth of the matter is Jesus' blood paid it all. So don't ever make yourself believe from this day forward that you can't step into some things that are yours. I encourage you to claim the job. I encourage you to claim the house. I encourage you to claim success. I encourage you to walk in the anointing that God has placed on your life. I encourage you to speak to every mountain in your life and command it to be moved. Why? Because God says that you have access to them. Because you have access, you now are granted to walk into everything that God has for you. Hi, my name is Tobias Hall. I have the honor of serving as the lead pastor of a brand new church plant on Long Island called the Fellowship Center. We are a multicultural, multi-generational, and multi-ethnic ministry that has the pleasure of serving the Baldwin Long Island community. You know, we started our ministry uh, just a year ago, and in that time, God has done some extraordinary things through us. We've been able to uh, feed the homeless. We've been able to provide clothing to children in need. We've been able to supply back-to-school supplies for children. It has been an extraordinary journey here at the Fellowship Center. Our core values are very simple. We believe that every life touched is a life change, and every life change can and will empower a nation. And so we're grateful to have the opportunity of, to serve this community in this capacity. And we know that God is really just getting started with our ministry. There's so much more that we can do. And we look forward to the opportunity of serving God's people in the years to come. God bless.